Hello, I'm Dr. Hans Doermaal. Welcome to Hans Doermaal Presents Fun with Philosophy. Today we're going to think about knowledge. Isn't that fun? Our very first guest is the ancient Greek philosopher Socrates, who was standing on the marketplace and asking the young people, what do you know? This is Socrates. He lives in Athens and is married to Xantippe. But he doesn't know that he lives in Athens and is married to Xantippe because he is a skeptic. And skeptics claim to have no knowledge whatsoever. They believe that they do not possess any knowledge at all. Hence, he does not know that he lives in Athens and is married to Xantippe. Socrates is talking at the Agora to some young people. He asks them, what do you know? What are you absolutely sure of? What would your answer be? One of the young people could have answered, I know that the patron of our city of Athens is Pallas Athena. Socrates would have responded to this answer with more questions. Are you sure? Yes. How do you know? A priest told me and my parents told me this as well. Do you believe Pallas Athena exists? Yes. Are you absolutely sure that she exists? Yes, I am absolutely sure. And how do you know that? My father told me. And everything he ever told you was true? Uh, no, sometimes he was wrong. So how do you know he was right in this case? I do not. So are you sure Pallas Athena exists? No, I do not. Eventually the young people all would go home having fewer things they were sure of than when they went to the market. And of course, back home, they challenged the beliefs of their parents the way Socrates challenged theirs. The citizens of Athens were not amused with Socrates. He had to stand trial. He was convicted for corrupting the youth and for atheism. The punishment was death. He had to drink hamlock, which he did. That actually wasn't that funny. Our second guest today is Socrates' pupil, Plato. Plato was not a skeptic, but a rationalist. He argued that we can have knowledge, but in order to see that we indeed can have knowledge, we need to know what knowledge is. So let's take a look at Plato's view on knowledge. This is Plato, and this is Theotetus. Theotetus is a mathematician who was born in Athens. It is said that he resembled Socrates in the snubness of his nose and the bulging of his eyes. Plato is going to help him understand what knowledge is. Plato asks, my dear Theotetus, can you tell me something you know? Theotetus pauses for a moment and then says, I know that if I have four apples and then eat one, I have three apples left. Very well, Plato says. So is it then possible for you to know in that situation that you have 20 apples? No, it's not. That would not be true. So what's the most important aspect of knowledge? Well, it has to be that something can only be knowledge if it is true. I do believe you're right, Plato says. That was quite easy, wasn't it? But can you also tell me which things can be true? The Athetus is silent for a moment and then hesitantly says, Fact? Ah, Plato responds. That's an answer that many people give, but it is incorrect. But it is an understandable mistake. Have another guess. Think about a liar. What does a liar do? Well, he tells lies. I know lies true. They, they just looked at Plato with surprise. Of course not. Lies are always false. So, apparently one can tell things that are false. So which things can be true or false? Things we say. Statements. Exactly. Statements can be true or false. And of course, statements express what we think, what our beliefs are. So beliefs can be true or false as well. Do you see that? By Zeus, Plato, you are right. Plato's yelled, I do see that. 
Now, since we do not always say what we think we know, it does make sense to say that the things we classify as knowledge are true beliefs, right? Indeed, I agree. But having true beliefs is not enough for them to be knowledge. You also have to give an account of how you know they are true. You have to provide a justification. What do you mean? Thetis asked. Have you ever heard of Atlantis? Plato asked in return. The Sunken Island? Yes, obviously I have. Do you know it actually existed? No, I just read about it. But it might be the case that it existed, and that the sentence Atlantis existed is true. So if someone believes this, then this person has a true belief, but not knowledge. I see, Theotetus said slowly. For it to be knowledge, one actually needs to have seen it. You're almost right, says Plato. Of course, seeing it would be a justification for the belief. But have you ever been to Sparta? Have you ever seen that city? I have not, Theotetus answers. And does Sparta exist? Ah, I see where you're going. I know that Sparta exists, but have not seen it. But I know many people coming from Sparta and trust them to tell the truth. So giving a justification could be telling you that I saw the city or provide another account of how I know this. That's it. That's what knowledge is. A justified and true belief. Okay. What do you have to go home now? Right. See you later. Plato, in fact, argues that a sentence is true when it corresponds to the facts. That's basically behind Plato's theory. If knowledge is a justified and true belief, then a true belief is a belief that corresponds to the facts. So it is something I believe, a mental state, that depicts the world the way the world is. So for instance, take my belief that I have a blue bottle. The belief this bottle is blue is true because the bottle is blue. So it depicts my mental state is as it were a picture of reality. And if the picture is representing reality the way reality is, we say that the picture is true. We say that the sentence, the belief is true. If I say the bottle is green, if I believe that the bottle is green, then my belief does not correspond to the fact, does not depict, depict reality the way reality is, and thus is a false belief. It's not true. This is called the correspondence theory of truth. A sentence or a belief is true when it corresponds to the facts, when it depicts the world the way the world is. Let us see what Tony and Ronnie and our philosophical guest make of all this. Here's a bit of background. As you can see, Tony and Ronnie are identical twins. Tony never fulfilled his dream of becoming a famous rock star with his band Tony and the Thought Crimes. But he studied philosophy, which is even better, or so he tells himself. After he graduated, he became a YouTuber and has a philosophy talk show together with his brother, who is also unemployed. Welcome one and all to the Tony and Ronnie Talk Philosophy Talk Show. Today our guest is Adam Gatje, who claims that Plato was wrong in thinking that knowledge is a justified and true belief. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you for inviting me. It has long been held, at least since Plato, that if one knows something, that one then has a belief that is true, and that one can also give a justification for that belief. But now I've heard that you disagree with that. I'm not only disagreeing with it, I can show you 
that it has to be wrong. Please elaborate. I see that there is just one piece of chocolate pie left. Now there's Billy. She wants a piece of chocolate pie. I see that Billy has an apple. Her father has told me that Billy will get this last piece of chocolate pie. So I now have the belief that Billy gets the last piece of chocolate pie. And infer from that the belief that the girl that gets the last piece of chocolate pie has an apple. So you are justified in believing that the girl that gets the last piece of chocolate pie has an apple because the father told you. Exactly. So if she indeed gets the last piece of pie, then that is the belief I have. It is true and I have a justification for it. So according to the definition, it's knowledge. I get it. But what's the problem? It is her sister Bobby who gets the pie. Shelley gave it to her instead of to Billy. So the belief that the girl that gets the last piece of chocolate pie has an apple was false. Ah, no, it wasn't false because Bobby also has an apple. So my belief that the girl that gets the last piece of chocolate pie has an apple was indeed true. And it was justified. So it's a justified and true belief, but not knowledge? It's not knowledge because the belief it was based on that Billy would get the last piece of chocolate pie was false. It's a coincidence that my belief that the girl that gets the last piece of chocolate pie has an apple was true. So I did not actually know this. So it's a justified and true belief, but it's not knowledge. The definition is wrong. Now, what do you make of that, Ronnie? Isn't that something? I'm not convinced. The justification of Getcher's belief that the girl that gets the last piece of chocolate pie has an apple was based on a false belief. The belief that Billy would get it. That is what Getcher said. So why is it not convincing? This means that the justification of his belief that the girl that gets the last piece of chocolate pie has an apple is based on a falsehood. I don't think that justifications, explanations of how you name something, can contain falsehoods. If a justification consists of claims, all these claims have to be true, otherwise it's not a real justification. That too is something to think about. I would really like a piece of chocolate pie now. Yeah, so would I. We often make claims that we know something, but do we really? Do we even know what we mean by I know? Do you think Plato's right? If not, why not? If you agree with Gatje, why? If not, why not? Sapere audio. Wasn't that fun? Well, that's it for this episode of Fun with Philosophy. Stay safe.